All right, let me take you on a ride, man. I'm going to take you on a tour through ADX Supermax. This is a little different. I'm going to take you on a tour. This is what it is. This is how Wayne Perry, Pistol Pete, Larry Hoover, and El Chapo is surviving in ADX. Sit back and enjoy the ride, man. See, we're inside ADX right now. All right? Hey. All right, unique mech audio, man. Welcome to ADX, man. This is the center control behind me, so I'm going to give you a tour. This is the board where when the police come in, they got to pick up their handcuffs, their shackles. You see those long chains on a handcuff? Those are called shackles. See those, uh, uh, you know, th those chains? That's called belly chains, and then those padlocks go on it. And they got the real big handcuffs, so if a dude is too big, they can't try and say that they want to be handcuffed in the front. So this is the board where they pick up their supplies and how they got to move us around when they in there. It's nothing nice in ADX. That's why I'm trying to tell y'all now. Don't think that it's nothing sweet because this is hell on earth. Remember that. And I'm trying to prevent you from going there. See, once those doors lock, it's a wrap. Just keep that in mind. All right? I'm going to take you through the sales you know, I'm going to take you through the different units. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to let you see what it is. That's called a set of control. That runs the whole prison right there. Everything is ran from that, right? Once that door closed, then you're in the unit, and then you walk up the joint, and you wind up in, you know, on the range, in the cells, and I'm getting ready to show you all that. So just sit back and know, see, that's the hallway, you know. That's the imam coming in to work. You know, and the chaplain, so they go in. Inmates don't walk around freely like that. You see how the ground is going down? That's because they built it underground and it was too heavy and the ground started sinking and they didn't want to stop to try and do something to dig it up, to reinforce it, so they left it like it is. So these are the long hallways we walk down. They used to have me handcuffed and shackled, walking down there to go to the medical, to go to the visit, you know, to go wherever you had to go, you had to walk down there. That's why that ground is, move, is you know, looking like that. You see those squiggly lines? That's where the, the earth was shifting from the weight of the prison underground. Then you go through these big double doors right here. This is how you enter into the unit. So I'm going to take you into the units at ADX so you can't say that you don't know or you didn't know why you wound up in prison. This is the visiting hall. You talk to your family on those little beige phones. You get locked in that side of the visit on the outside and your family is locked on the inside here. And there's a door behind you. When I was there, there was a door behind my visitors. The visitors complained that it wasn't cool to be doing that. So being that they complained, they took it out. But you talk on this phone to your family. Everything is recorded. Big bulletproof glass. That's the visiting hall where your family could go to the vending machine and those doors you seen on the right. That's how you go into the visiting hall where those are the booth there and they got cameras watching your family while you're in there so they can't flash and show you a little tatas or nothing, you know? And if they do that, they shut your visit down and they cancel your visit, they never be able to come back and visit you again. That's ADX visiting hall, so you understand. Now, this is the units, right? Remember, the center control is what control everything. So once you walk into the unit, you come walking into this joint here, the center control... They open up the gate to allow you in those cells you see behind you. That's the first floor cells, and then they got other cells upstairs. Now, I'm going to take you for a tour upstairs into the cells so you can see how I had to live for five years. So don't say no one never told you that it's hell on earth that they don't create it. So don't go violating the law, winding up in prison, and thinking that is nothing sweet. You see that cement bench? That right there, that little cement stub, we sit on there, and that's the toilet, that cold metal toilet. We used to take our, our those, those little bus shoes, the blue bus shoes you see right there. That's the bed, and under the bed is our little shelf. We put our clothes, our books, or whatever, but we take those shoes, and we put them on that cold cement uh, toilet so we ain't got to sit on the cement toilet. 
But when we want to write a letter, we got to sit on that stump that we showed you. I'm getting ready to show you the desk. That's the only thing in the cell right there and everything is cement. Right there. That's the bed. That little window is the only daylight that we get to see. The only time you get to look outside, and that's the sink. You push that little button, the water come out. When it shuts off, it still be leaking, and that's why it have that stain going down the middle. And that bar right there on the left, that's to the sally port. I'm going to show you the sally port and everything else in a minute. So don't say I didn't take you on the ride. I wanted to make my first reaction video about prison so you understand. That's the sprinkler, the sprinkler of fire detector. You know, where something go on, and that's the vent. That vent there is where I talked to the brother fly that I interviewed last week through the vent for hours because we was locked in next door to each other. Couldn't see each other. We just talked through those little holes right there standing up on the sink because it's all the way up in the ceiling, as you know, as you can see. Now, that joint there is nothing nice. And that fluorescent light, when you're laying on the bed, your eyes are to the light. They kept the lights on 24 hours, so my eyes is messed up. You see that block? The top button, that's where you put your cigarette in to light your cigarette. And they got the coils in the back because they don't want you to have matches, you know, or none of that. Now, that's the cigarette lighter. That's the rest button. You push that button. It go to pole. They turn off the pole, the button. And that button with the black around it, you push that. And that go to center control to let them know it's emergency. And that's how you turn your water warm right there. Hot water, cold water. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything is cement and metal in this joint. So this is what you want. So y'all wanted to know what it was like in ADX. So now I'm showing you with a reaction video. So, you know, God working mysterious ways. So he took his time for me to get this reaction video together for me to find this video so I could show you how it moves. So like I said, that right there, that's the desk. We sit at that cement desk. That's our little books. And we sit there and we write our letters and we sit on this little metal stump right there. That's the chair. So we take the tower that you see on top of the desk. We put it there. So we're sitting on the cold cement and we sit there and we write our letters to our loved ones. So when you get your letters from your loved ones in ADX, no, they sitting on that stump right in that letter if they not laying in the bed. Those bus shoes, we're supposed to use those for shoes, but we use those to put on a toilet to keep, you know, the toilet seat, you know, keep your, your thighs warm when you're sitting on it. We put those right on that toilet right there. You hit the toilet, it flush one time, it cuts off for 15 minutes. So, you, you know, normally when you got a celly, every time you, 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 you pass gas or you're getting ready to defecate, you'll push the button so they don't have to hear it or smell it. But when you're in a cell by yourself, you only get to push it one time. You see that window? That window is the only daylight that we get to see. And that window leads to the sky. We don't see no ground. We don't see no grass. We don't see no trees. It took 20 years for me to finally see trees and grass after being locked up in this joint and going through it. You know, you can't imagine what it felt like for me to see trees. You see the pillow? You take the pillow and we take the pillow. Well, I took the pillow. I put it between my legs, you know, like it was my girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I took a, a, another pillow or I wrapped the blanket up and made it into a pillow. And they got the U.S. stamp on it, the United States stamp. That's the blanket. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I wrap it up and I curl up in the, with the pillow and the, and the one between my legs. And it's like I'm hugging my girl and I'm sitting there, you know, doing my time five years of this. Locked in 23 hours a day, five days a week, because you don't come out on weekends. Then they give you this little bull crap, black and white TV with the USB knob that a lot of you youngins don't even know. This is the TVs they had in the cell, little black and white TV. And that little silver box you see there on the right, that's the shower. I'm getting ready to show you the shower. That's the shelf where the TVs is at, but we normally got a longer cable, you know, from the rec department told them we need a longer cable, and we move the TV from there, and we put it down on the desk so it's closer to the bed, so we ain't got to get out the bed to stand up to change the channel because the TV stayed on all night. It didn't cut off. The bottom button is the USB for the young people that don't know. The UHF channels, you like channel 31, where they used to have video music box for Ralph Dan McDaniel, but we don't get that all the way out there in ADX. But we got the little black and white TV, and, you know, uh... That's the shower, you know? When we get these showers, every 14 days they move your cell. When you're moving the cell, they give you a little cup, you know, like a pill cup with um, Ajax in it. And you take the Ajax and they give you a little piece of green scouring pad and you wash the shower down because dudes be in there masturbating, defecating, urinating, whatever they want to do in the cell. And some dudes didn't clean up after their cell. But every 14 days for five years, I had to move to another cell. 
And when you move to the next cell, you had to clean up behind the man. That's the hook where you hang your towels right outside the shower. I'm getting ready to show you the shower and the water coming on and everything so you can see how I took a shower. That's the shower head right there. Now we're going to turn the water on and let you see what it looked like, you know, the pressure that comes out that water. And this is what I had to take a shower with for five years, man. So I'm not trying to get, that's the water on right there in the shower, you know? That's all the pressure you get to take a shower. And then you get a minute and a half and then it cut off. Then you got to wait another minute and a half to push it again for it to come on. See the water building up over there? So when people soaping up, it hits the wall. And then you got to wash that down after every shower. So when the next man come in there, it's good if you're a good convict. But you got some dudes that just didn't give a crap. And that there, that's the sally port. That laying, that's from laying in the bed. That's the desk on the right. That's the bench. TV's right above. That's the toilet. And that's the sally port where the, the bar's right there. The bars you're looking at is on the inside of the cell, and then you had a sally port, which is on the outside, and it had another steel door. I'm going to show you that and the outside of that in a minute. So I'm giving you a full tour ADX, man. You're never going to get this nowhere else. That's the outside right there. So they open that door up, and then it's those bars, and the bars are closed, so you can't get to them. If you try and put your hand through the bars to grab the police or whatever, they got two police standing on each side every time they come in with a third police in the middle. And if you stick your hand through the joint, pop out. You know, they hit you with the joint. You know what I mean? So that's how it is. So just sit back, enjoy the ride, because I'm trying to let you know it was nothing nice. This is not to brag about. This is just to let you know what ADX was like. So you're getting a full tour of ADX Supermax broken down from a man that had to live in there for five years. So this ain't no regular reporter. I'm just a journalist that been through hell. See those bars right there? That's the one that stayed closed. And you got to back up, put your hands through that little slit that you seen, and then they put the handcuffs on you and then you got to back out the cell and they take you out one at a time and that's how we go to wreck so we only wreck with the few people that's on this range right here that's it and they take us out one at a time i'm gonna take you in the yard i'm gonna let you see what the yard look like now adx supermax in florence is considered as the rockies uh 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 uh, uh the alcatraz of the rockies you know, now those windows on the left side you're seeing, that's looking down to the inside wreck is what they call it. But all this is a big empty cement room, <laughs> you know what I mean, with a cement slab that you could sit down on when you get tired. You know what I mean? You know, if you want to go down there and write a letter, you kneel down and write the letter, you know, just to get out your cell, to send you out your cell. We you see how they open these doors up. And that little slit that you see in the door under that round thing, they drop that down after they put the key in it, and that's where you put your hands in the back out. That's from the inside. That's from the outside of the cell. You see the inside? That's the bars that I was telling you about. That's the shower straight back. You know what I mean? So you're getting a full view, and that's the only daylight that I got for five years right there, that window, just so you understand. Nothing nice. So I wouldn't even encourage it to no one. Now, like I said, ADX Florence is considered as the Rockies of the Alcatraz. You know, it's connected to the compound, you know, in Colorado, uh, our correctional complex. They got a camp, a low, a medium, you know, a high max, and then they have the supermax. Now, ADX supermax, the initials stand for administrative detention maximum. So with that, that means that you're allowed to get everything anyone else is, is allowed to get. You know what I mean? In a regular USP, just so you understand, right? Um, so that means that you, we had uh, TBS, uh, USA. At that time, we had HBO and Cinemax in the joint. And from having all of them joints in there, we was able to watch TV in our cell because they was able to have it in a regular USP. So we was uh, allowed to have it in ADX Supermax, right? So now we're sitting in ADX Supermax, and um, if something happened in the regular USP, that's the duress button. When you push that duress button, I showed you that with the little black rubber thing around it. The police got to come up and turn it off, ask you what's going on, documented it, that you hit the button and keep it moving. Right. So now, you know, they come and they talk you through. They talk to you through those little slits in the door. And this is the rec yard. Welcome to the wreck yard. See, you don't see nothing out there. All you see is the sky, and they got a, a, a fence around the top of it with those beams to make sure that nobody can't break in. 
They make sure that they can't land a helicopter or drop a rope from a helicopter or send a drone to drop anything. That's why that fence is there. That's the only view I had for five years of the outside world. So if that's what y'all want, feel free to go there. You know what I mean? They got plenty of room for you. You know what I mean? That's my view. You know, that's where Wayne Perry, like I said, Pistol Pete, Larry Hoover, you know, El Chapo, the Unabomber, that's where they all at right now. And this is how they're living. So if you want to know how those men is surviving, you know, in ADX, I'm giving you a full tour right now. Remember, this is the wreck yard, you know, see the wreck yard, see those windows? Those are the cells. That's the little windows that shine out. So we like to be on top so we can see the sky, <laughs> you know? Now, when we come out, we'll walk up to the window. We talk to our family and they'll hold pictures up to the windows of the pictures they got from their family members and tell us about it or magazine or show us the books we got, they got. And we say, yo, try and get the police to pass the book. And that's how we communicate with each other. This here is the step down unit. The step down unit have cells on both sides. So that's like a blessing where you could look in your cell and look over and see another man trapped in a cage. That's how you walk in right there. They feed you on the outside. You come out, you know, welcome to the uh, Department of Justice Federal Bureau of Prison. When you come out on that range, you know, that's when you bring your laundry out, you eat, and you come out three times a day, and then you go back in your cell, but they still let you out for an hour a day wreck, so you get a little bit more freedom, because the first phase is 18 months. In that first part I showed you, that's phase one. Phase two is that that I just showed you, which is J-Block, and this is the outside of the jail. I'm going to show you how you can't even see none of the units where we live at like you could when you pull up to a regular prison because they're all built underground, man. They had us living underground, man. How much more inhumane can you get than that? So your family, they come walking there, then they got to take the elevator downstairs and play all these games. So it's designed to deteriorate your family from coming. So you depend on the Federal Bureau of Prison to take care of you instead of your family. Those Lord, see, man, things you see in the back, that's the guard tower. They up there with all kinds of ARs and M16s and everything else, you know, and night vision so that they can scope the joint. And that little road you see is where the police drive around to check the perimeter. I'm getting ready to show you the fence. So you see the fence that they have in this joint. Look at that. That's, that building you see is where you come sign in and then take the elevator to go downstairs to see your family. You know what I mean? So we under all of that grass and vegetation you can see. And it don't even grow, you know, just so you understand. Like I said, those big cement things, those are the towers that the police is in. That's the police cars that, you know, for the officers that work in the prison. And that's where that's at. But then now, um, if something happened in the USP, they lock down ADX. We have nothing to do with it because we locked in the cell 23 hours a day. We don't even know what's going on. But they got us locked in our cell until they figure out what's going on over there because they figured the shot was called from over here where we was at ADX. Like in 1997 and 1998, they had a big war with the California MA and the Texas MA. If you want me to tell you about that, how they wound up, you know, squashing that right from in ADX, I'll, I'll tell you about it. Put it in the comments. If you got any comments about ADX or any more questions, put it in there, and I'll do another video to this video to answer your questions, because right now I'm just giving you a tour of hell on earth so you can see what I had to go through so you know what time it is. Now, that's ADX. You see that? <laughs> Come on, man. They had us living in there, locked in a cell 23 hours a day. We only got the phone twice a month for 15 minutes at a time. If we called our family member and they did not answer, you know, or they answered and said, oh, Susan's not here, Kim is not here, John is not here, your brother's not here, that's considered as the phone call. And now you only got one more try. So if you're calling somebody answer, you might as well talk to them no matter who it is, even if you don't like them. Now, that's the barbed wire, so you understand. This is the barbed wire. They got barbed wire on this side of the fence. Look how sharp they are. Then on the other side of the fence, they got the equal amount of barbed wire. And then they got more barbed wire on the top of the fence. I'm getting ready to show you all that right now. But I just wanted to show you how sharp these wires are. So, you know, that's going to rip through human skin. So no one escaped from there. That's why they put El Chapo there, being that he escaped from Mexico a couple of times. They said, oh, we got someplace for him. And that's where they at, you know? Now... 
You see how they got the barbed wire above it? But that's on the other side of the fence. So if you climb over the first set of barbed wires, and what do we normally do to try and get out of there is we throw a blanket over that, and then we'll go over. So you need a couple of blankets. They got to throw a blanket over the, for the first lower barbed wire right there, and they got to throw another blanket over the top barbed wire. They got to throw another barbed wire, blanket over the second barbed wire, then throw a blanket over the third barbed wire to get over the fence. And then when you get out, all you got is that desert, so there's nowhere to go. So don't say I didn't tell you. Like I said, that's the guard tower that is lined up with all the barbed wires so that they can watch everything going on, you know? But like I said, look at that. Look at all this barbed wire, man. So how are you escaping this? All this is a deterrent. The crazy part is my youngest daughter, her first memory of me is coming to see me at the prison with all the barbed wire is how she described it. She said, Daddy, it's crazy because the first memory I have of ever seeing you was coming to that prison with all the barbed wire that we had to take the elevator. <laughs> and that's it, you know, with the big shiny towers, with the, with the tinted windows. And that's how she describes my home at that time that she came to see me in. You see, all desert around it. That's from the ground looking up at the tower because those are tinted windows so you can't see that the guards are watching you when you're driving around the joint. So they're taking a video from down up. You see, I'm giving you a tour. You know what I mean? You already know the Cash App, Dollar Sign, Unique, Mecca Hall. Um, make sure you hit the logo and it says it was created in 2020. I'm taking you on the tour. And make sure you cop the book of Roaring Harlem, man. Make sure you cop the book of Roaring Harlem at roaringharlem.com. All right? roaringharlem.com. You know? At Google or Bing. Now, that's there. Let's go back in the prison because we've been out here long enough. But before I do that, let me tell you, like I said, the step down program go 18 months phase one, you know, locked in the cell 23 hours a day, uh, 12 months phase two, where you come out three times a day to eat and you get wrecked once a day. And then you got phase three when you go to the unicorn unit. Look at that barbed wire, man. That's why I'm showing that just so you could understand how serious this prison was. And then they sit up there watching everything. You only can see him now because the window's open. But other than that, it's tinted like the other window that's not open. So they're just giving you a view. But those barbed wires, like I said, ain't nothing nice. Rip right through you. But after you do the phases, then you get out. When you get in the last program, then you sit there and you do your thing. You know, the door's open, family. I'm doing the video. All right? I'm, I'm All right. Down now. Yeah. So, you know, that's where we at. Now, that's the receiving when the buses come in and they bring the new inmates, they bring them in through that. So when they bring them in through that, that's where the buses come in and they take you down in this circle that goes around and around and around and around. I don't know how that big bus make it down there. And then when you get out, you got all these police and what they call the Ninja Turtle Gear, turtle gear and they beat you like you stole something. I mean, they broke my ribs. I mean, they, they beat me bad. You know what I mean? When you come there, that's the initiation to let you know that they in control. You know what I mean? So like I said, it's the federal correctional complex at Florence, Colorado that is connected to with the camp, the uh, low, the medium, the high max, and then the administrative detention super max. So that's what that is. So welcome to my world. Don't say that I didn't take you there. I'm going to take you back in the unit so that you can see what time it is. I just wanted you to understand. They got um, Escobar's Hitman is there. I met him. I'm not even going to say his name. He turned into a, a devout Christian, and he's allegedly killed over 500 people. But now he's a Christian, and they sell beads on the commissary, these little Indian beads, and these needles with this, like, dental floss thread. And, you know, they put on the TV how to do bead work. And he learned how to make beads where he make, like, a whole Venetian blinds out of, like, 20,000 beads, you know, and they allow you to mail it home to your family. Now, that's the hallway I was telling you about that goes down. They took me down there with all these belly chains and all that. And as I'm walking, I realize that I'm walking faster. And I look and I'm like, whoa, you know, I look down. It's because the ground is sinking, right? Now, they also teach you how to do crochet, you know. They sell you the crochet needles and they sell you the crochet stuff on the joint. You know what I mean? Um... So, you know, that's where that's at, man. Just so you understand. It ain't nothing nice. I, I wouldn't recommend it to my worst enemy. That's why I'm trying to tell y'all, don't get caught up in it. It's definitely not worth it. That's not some place you're trying to go. And that's not some place that I would like you to go. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm trying to deter you from going there by showing you the inside. Because no one ever took you inside the ADX 
not like this. So this is what it is. My man Dan Cam just came in, the greatest cameraman editor of all time. Follow him at DP201. You're trying to get your videos done. You know, that's the man. You know, the hour he's been with me since day one, but I learned how to work my system on my own because he done blew up since he's been over here. He got me a million views in like 90 days, and before you know it, Black Ink, uh, Brooklyn called him, Housewives of Jersey called him. So, you know, me being a man, I had to let him go and let him go do his thing. And, you know, I'm proud of him, but he always tap in when I'm doing something. And right now, I'm getting ready to interview today Five Mikes. If y'all don't know who Five Mikes is, when I did the Vlad interview and I mentioned about seeing Michael Jackson freebasing in, uh, in uh, 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 Studio 54, he put a comment up going at me, cussing me out, boom, boom, boom. But I don't take that serious because he's younger than me, so he don't really understand the error at the time. So, you know... We want the bonding. And, you know, big shout out to Jim Jones because Jim Jones let him know, slow down five. He was outside. He know what time it is. And him being a man, respecting Jim Jones, respecting the, you know, the era, the hustle, he fell back. He gave me a phone call. We kicked it. We've been friends ever since. We've been talking about doing a video. So he's coming over to do a video today. And I got Dan Cam filming and edited. Five mics being a minute. I might even give you a sneak peek with him, you know. But that's what that is. So welcome to ADX. Now, ADX, they was bringing the people from Marion that, that couldn't program to get out using those phases because they was too militant. And the police was giving petty shots. If you get it, let's say you got two years in and you made it to the second phase. If a police don't like you, he'll come in and say you got an extra government spoon and they'll give you a shot and you got to start over. So now your time turned from three and a half years to five years. And then you get three years down the line and then they give you another petty shot saying that you had you know, a pen when you was only supposed to have a pencil. And then now you got another three years. So the three and a half years just turned to eight years. So then now you make it another two years down the road and then you get a shot. Then now that turns to 10 years. And I got brothers that's been in there 30 years in lockup. 30 years in lockup because the police play these games with these men because they won't conform to the bull crap. So that's why I want you to know what time it is. Now, we don't need to sit here looking at him doing all this talking. So let me find you, you know, some more visuals so you can see what goes on and where we at in ADX. All right. This right here is the receiving and discharge. When you first come into prison, they bring you over here. They take your picture with this camera. They videotape you to show that you healthy. But this is after they don't whoop you. They want to videotape you and act like you came there whoop, like you whooped yourself on the bus. You know what I mean? And then they put you in these holding tanks. And then the medical come see you. The psychiatrist come and see you. The chaplain come and see you. The unit manager, case manager. And then they decide where they're going to put you. And this right here is the... Uh, second phase that I'm showing you here where they got cells on both sides. So now you get, see, you walk right in the door, you got cells on the left, cells on the right. In phase one, you only got cells on the right. And then that big bay window I showed you on the left overlooking the thing. That's the shower straight in the back. See, that's the shower straight back there. Now, I'm going to give you one, right? Because I feel like riding. I'm going to give you one. Mario Villabona, uh, not Mario Villabona, Ray, uh, Juan Ramon Mata was in there and he had a beef with the orderly who was a blood from like um, Oakland. Nah, not even Oakland, Sacramento, right? So he had a beef with this dude and the dude's job was to clean up the shower. So what he did was, what he did was he defecated in the shower so the dude would have to clean it up. So when the dude went to clean it up, he knew he's beefing with uh, Mata, so he knew Mata did it. So of course, as soon as he went in there and saw the feces, he went and smacked it. Yeah, I, you know, just keep it 100. And, you know, it, 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 it went to rumbling, you know? But that's how it is, man, because everybody is on some evil time and, you know, trying to get their get back. See, they, see that's the sales when you're going uh, in the step down part, the, the beds is against the wall by the window. So you could lay in the bed and look out the sky when you're in the first phase it's punishment. So they have it where you, the back of your head is to the window. So you can't see the sky. So it's a privilege to get to the second phase just so you could lay in the bed with your head on the pillow and look out the window at the stars. You see how they had us living? If that's what you want, feel free to do it. They got a whole lot of beds for you over there. All right. But there was a dude in there, right, to show you. They brought the dudes over from Marion that couldn't comply, that might have been in 10, 20 years or whatever, is stuck in Marion. They brought him over to ADX because he was tighter. And when they brought him over to ADX, it was one dude from Baltimore. 
He watched so much Farrakhan tapes that this dude actually sounds so much like Farrakhan. If you close your eyes, you would think he was Farrakhan. Then he did legal work, and he's trying to convince everybody that he knows what he's doing with the legal work. You know, now, this is the law library. In order to get the books from the law library, you got to full out a cop out, you send it in, and you say, give me um, F2D series, you know, 446, you know, federal reporter. And then they'll send you the book that night, you hold it overnight, and you do what you got to do. You know what I mean? And then they bring it back the next day. It was a brother that wound up pulling a female, a little short white girl that used to work there, little brother, you know, was crazy cut up. They wound up killing him. You know what I mean? He got, he was from the Bronx. He got shot in his calf, and his calf was like this big, swole up. So they sat there, and they tried to deal with all of this with him, and they was mad that he had this white girl, and they didn't want to fire her and didn't want to let the public know what happened because she was like the captain's niece that they gave a job to pass the books around, but she was fascinated with gangsters. Homie pulled her. They sent him to uh, Springfield, Illinois, told him that they was going to take the bullet out of his calf. Next thing you know, we got word back a week later that he died from cancer. The man used to do 75 pull-ups at one time, 20 sets of 75 pull-ups at one time, and now they say this man died of cancer. That's the courtroom that they have in ADX, so you can see, because they didn't want to fly us you know, cross-country because they said we was too dangerous, so they got a courtroom in the prison that was ran by a video camera like a Zoom, but they wound up having to close that because you know, the public is supposed to be allowed to go to any court proceeding. So being that the public couldn't come in, they shut that down. So I was so glad because this way they wanted me to do my appeal here and that. But, you know, lost the appeal, so I didn't even get to go in that room, must just go anywhere else. But, you know, welcome to ADX, man. But now, you know, this is the gym. They actually got a gym in ADX. See, I'm giving you a tour, but the gym is when you get to the Unicorn part because the Unicorn part, you go to work, they got two sides, the, 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 the east side and the west side, and the east will go to work in the morning from 7.30 to 10.30, and then the west will go from like 12 to 12.30 to 2.30, and, you know, that's how they move. Then you get to go down here, you do your pull-ups, your dips, you can shoot some basketball, play basketball with somebody, and do what you got to do. That's how they really shaked and baked it in the joint. So they tried to make it that every step offered you something different so it was incentive for you to chill out. You know what I mean? So uh, this right here now is the medical. You know, I remember the first time they took me. That's where when they broke me up and swole my joints up this big, they had a little Chinese lady that had to masturbate me to get the fluid out my nutsack because they beat me so bad because, you know, I refused to let them cut my joint to just drain the joint out. So only way to get it out was through you know what I mean? My pee hole. If you want to hear about that story, I'll put it in the, you know, put it in the comments and I got you. But, you know, that's the medical. You know, I, I had to survive five years there, so I've been through all that. And, you know, here we go back to the sale. So you see how the cell is, you know, is set up. And don't forget, you know, th this is the toilets we had to sit on, you know. And, and right there is the cement bench that we sit at the desk. And the desk is right above that bench and then your bed. And that's big as the cell is. Then they got the shower over there to the right. You know what I mean? And, of course, the world-famous little black and white TV. The older brothers used to make sure, youngins like me that came in, that we always watch, like, Prime Time, Dateline, you know what I mean, 2020. And the next day at Rec when we went out, because we went at Rec together with the range, they're questioning us about whatever it was the night before. That's how I got into the news and politics from the older brother. Big shout-out to Applebee, Sherman, Dobson, Harris L., you know what I mean? And people like that, that, you know, and David Ford, rest in peace, from D.C. that pushed me to get my G.D., to stay up on politics, to learn to write, read, you know, and things like that. That's how convicts did back then. And like I said, this the shower. You see all that water there on the shower? When you come out, you got to wash it down, wipe it down, dry it to make sure that the soap scum don't stick to it or nothing because you don't want to catch nothing and you don't want the next person to come in to wind up catching nothing behind you. So we keep the showers clean. Some people didn't even clean the showers. Like I said, there was even a brother, there was even a brother that uh, used to take his dreads and, uh, and wipe the feces. When he used the bathroom, he used his dreads to wipe himself and then write his 
his rat's name on the wall talking about how he was going to kill his rat. There was another dude that used to, you know, uh, button up his shirt. He'd put, take his shirt, put it under that mattress, and that's the ironing board. Left it there all week. Friday night, he'd throw it on, button it all the way up. Mexican brother, and he'd take his mattress, tie it to the boss, and he'd beat the crap out the mattress, and he'd call the mattress Gloria. I guess Gloria was his woman that he used to go home and be drunk, or maybe she was the one that told on him and got him the life sentence while he was in ADX. But you see the sinks in there? This is crazy. Now, we've been on here long enough. Now, you know, so you understand, some people even talk to themselves, like this brother I'm talking about. When you go talking to yourself, it's one thing. Because we'd even do it on the street as a free man. But when you go answering yourself, like, man, I can't believe they did that to me. Bro, they did that to me too. You're looking like, whoa, who said that? You know what I mean? But that's how we used to go crazy up in there. As long as you didn't respond to yourself, you knew you were sane. And that's the vents that we'll talk to the person next door to us or below us through that vent, and we had to stand up on the sink. So we up there for hours talking through the vent. And they used to keep these lights on 24 hours. That's why my eyesight is a little bad on the left. When I laid down, that that the, the light, it's like it always dragged in. Like I said, that's the duress button in the black, cigarette lighter in the top, and to the right is where, you know, you push the button to let the police come. So, you know, that's what it is. But make sure you cop the book of Roaring Harlem. You know what I mean? And I'm on Twitch now. Go to Twitch. You already know. And I already told you my um my cash app is dollar sign unique make a hole. Make sure you hit the logo and it says it was created in 2020. I've been on here long enough, you know. So let me try and tap out real quick. Let me uh freeze this up, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna give you a last minute joint if I could get this right. You know, I'm just learning to work this, so you know, bear with me. I done came a long way. So this is what it is. All right. So this is what's called my main screen. All right. So let's go back to the regular USP and let me talk to you. Yo, this video was to let the youngins know it's not worth it. It's nothing glamorous about prison. Don't let nobody fool you. Unique Maker Audio told you so if you choose to run the streets, know to follow the code of the streets. But I'm telling you, it's not worth it. Don't do it. Go get a job so you don't have to be put in a situation to have to tell on your comrade, wind up in prison, and wind up getting airlifted because you done told on somebody because you're so used to doing it on YouTube. It's real when you go in these prisons. All right? So we've been on here long enough. Thank you for tapping in. And you already know how the Mecca do. I Cheers. 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 the crime. 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 Cheers. Out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Trust. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in hall. Uh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. The Instagram page and the YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself linked in. Real. Sit front row and get jewels from a kingpin. Uh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid. Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on probably the reason that him and your grams got along a man that generated millions on the block did his time never squilling to the cops make an audio Get it live like two G's in the 90s. Drop top 
Beamer so shine. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, it's a raw and uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie Linda Ed. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth them. Cause they the truth them. And bless up to all the rude men. Yeah. Yeah.